Today, we're going to take a closer look at Snapmaker version 1. The Snapmaker is a 3-in-1 motion machine. It can 3D print, it can do laser engraving, and it can do CNC carving. And the Snapmaker version 1 was a Kickstarter campaign that collected over $2.2 million to get it off the ground. Now there is a Snapmaker version 2 out right now. It is also a Kickstarter campaign. But Snapmaker sent over version 1 just to see what I thought of the whole platform. And I have to say, for what it does, it's a pretty ingenious little system. So today we're going to go over all the things that I like about Snapmaker version 1 and a few of the things that I hope they change in Snapmaker version 2. So let's get started just by looking around. So here's Snapmaker in its 3D printing mode. You do get a heated bed. The build volume is 150, 150, 150. And that's the biggest limiting feature to this whole thing, but we'll get more into that a little later. You do get a touch screen. It's removable. It just has a magnet that connects to that bracket. Everything is connected up by these curly cords with these network type plugs on them. I'm not sure if that's an RJ45 or not. But the thing that I like most about this whole construction is that everything is the same. Meaning these are just modules, one, two, and three. They all have a stepper motor, a coupler, and a lead screw in them. So everything on this machine is driven by a lead screw. And when you're putting it together, they don't even tell you which one needs to go where because they are identical. And I thought that was just a really cool idea. You could just swap out these modules or add them if you needed to make something else. It's kind of like 3D printing Lego. I kind of like it. And on the back, you have the proprietary board and controller. Again, on this side, you have that same RJ45 connector. You can use it in standalone mode with a USB flash drive. You also have USB-B right here where you can connect it up to your computer. Again, this is the 3D printing mode, but you also have a laser engraver. These just swap out onto this frame. Again, all the frames are the same. It's just a mount with a bunch of holes in it. So no matter what, if you're attaching the head or the bed, it's all the same frame piece. And then you have your CNC carving head. Again, same size, just swaps out onto that bracket. So that's just a quick rundown to get us started. But there's a lot of content to cover here because it does have three different modes. It took me a long time to get all this testing done. But what do you say let's start with the 3D printing mode? Because that's pretty much what we do around here. I'll walk you through all the steps and all the different tests that I did just to show you the workflow and how this thing's all laid out. So the first thing you're gonna notice is the Snapmaker is really loud. Just with the fans running for the 3D printer head, it's very noticeable, even from another room. We're gonna talk a bit more about that later. I will shut it off as soon as I can, but I wanna walk you through a few things. So let's talk about standalone 3D printing mode first. So you're printing from a USB flash drive. So getting started with this, there's not a whole lot of controls here. You've got your main stop and start, your files, you do have a control screen. The touch screen is very reactive, by the way. You have jog mode, you can move it around. You have a home button, and you have change filament. We'll go ahead and hit that. So change filament, all it does is get the hot end up to temp. And here's the first flaw with standalone mode. There are no preheat buttons. You can't preheat the bed, you can't preheat the nozzle. All you can do is this change filament feature. And it does heat up the nozzle, you can adjust it, but it doesn't heat the bed. If we head into settings, we have an about, tells you a little bit about the machine, we have an FAQ, which you can scan with your phone if you'd like. And then we have calibration. Calibration is an attempt to go around to four different spots on the bed so that you can adjust your Z offset. And this works great. It takes a few times to get used to it. The middle is a little lower than the edges on this one, but it's a 150, so it's pretty easy to get around. The problem is, you can't preheat the bed or adjust the bed temperature manually if you want to do this sequence. Even on a bed this small, if it's not preheated, you're not going to get a really good level. You can kind of trick it by starting a print, letting it get up to temp, stopping the print, and then doing this level quick before it cools down, but that's really no way to handle things. And that's all the buttons there are. You can go into files, select a file, it's easy to do, no problem, but that's it. And for the 3D printing head, the filament is actually kind of challenging to get in and out. This is your idler button. You can press it. It's pretty hard to press. But you really got to try to get that filament out of there. 
So that's enough fan noise for now. And speaking of fans, I'm just going to hold this up here. This is the 3D printing head. This is their intended part cooling fan. And Snapmaker did get a hold of me after the live stream. I'll show you that Benchy in a moment. And they said I should change the orientation of my model and use the different slicer that they pointed me to. They have an updated version. And that does help, of course. But this is not the best design for a part cooling fan. It should really be aimed at the nozzle, as most of you know. So I definitely hope that is changed in 2.0. So the standalone mode really isn't all that robust, and it's pretty much the same way for the CNC carving and the laser graving, so we won't go over it again. But I think Snapmaker intended for you to run this connected to your computer so you could control it on the fly. And that brings me to my next subject, the software that they intend for you to use with Snapmaker. Let's take a quick look. This is the newest version of their software that they pointed me to after the live stream. It's called Snapmaker JS. You can set up your print jobs, your laser jobs, and your CNC carving right from here. This is your main work area, but then you can go to the specific areas down in here. I lied, I'm gonna turn the printer on one more time, just so I can show you how to connect up to it. So you can just select a port. We'll open. And then you have a terminal that you can talk to the printer. And then you can do all the finite controls that I would expect to see on the screen as well. The heater control, overrides, things like that. You even have a few quick buttons down here that you can use. And you can print right from here if you want to stay tethered all the time. So if you need functionality to use this machine, you really don't have many options other than to use it from this interface. In the 3D printing space, it works just like pretty much any other slicer. You have all your custom settings. You can create custom profiles. You have a fast, normal, and high quality. It gives you the speeds right here. But there's no real fine control. Like flow rate settings, speed settings for bridging or small perimeters. And that brings us to the next problem. This was the Vinci that we did on the live stream from the original Snapmaker software. We had the orientation flipped the other way opposite the part fan. This is the one where they told me to flip it around and use the new software. It's not a terrible print but the overhang definitely did suffer. It came out okay, a few extrusion issues. After that print, I made the changes they recommended, and then I started another Benchy. It did improve the overhang quite a bit. I was using the new software, still have a few extrusion issues. And then I moved on to printing some other things. I wanted to try a miniature Adelinda. That did not go so well. Any fine perimeter, the printer is too fast to complete it. It just doesn't work out. Adelinda was a bust. I couldn't get one to complete. So I moved on to poor Jesse here. It just can't complete those legs. Again, it's a small perimeter problem. You do see some extrusion issues up here. Not a terrible print other than you're never going to get those legs done. And then I slowed way, way down in the slicer. As slow as I thought I needed to go. It did come out, I got one leg, but the other one, still broken. There was no way I could tweak the slicer with the settings that they give us to get this to come out correctly. So after many, many failures with the slicer, I moved on to Prusa Slicer and just ran my G-code files on the Snapmaker. And finally, we were starting to see some high quality prints. So the good news is, you can use any G-code with the Snapmaker, it accepts it, but the bad news is, I can't get any slicer settings to work correctly for all models. Simpler models, sure, but anything with fine detail, even these large legs here, it's just not going to fly. I did one of Luby's foxes, came out pretty good, looks nice. I attempted a spiral chest piece, it looks okay, the retractions aren't all that great. I blame part cooling for that one, but it did complete it. And of course nowadays I can't test a printer without my layers a lot. And he looks okay. Came out just fine. Again, I had already switched over to Prusa Slicer. So I don't want it to seem like I'm beating up on Snapmaker here. I did try repeatedly to get their software to turn out a nice print, one with smaller perimeters, and I just couldn't make it happen. So after I switched to Prusa Slicer, everything was going okay, and it turns out a decent 3D print. But it is a 3-in-1 machine, so I'm not going to expect it to do everything spot on like a dedicated 3D printer would. So from there, I moved on to laser etching. So let's have a look at that.
So the screen they give you to work with, with the laser, there really isn't a whole lot here, but it gets the job done. You can do black and white or grayscale. You can change some size settings. You can transform it, move it around. You can set the dot density, the jog speed, work speed, multipass, and fixed power. And for the most part, I was happy with this. It seemed to work just fine. But there was one issue. The Snapmaker comes with this 200 milliwatt laser out of the box. They do have an upgraded laser. This laser only lasted for 45 minutes. I was just test cutting some cardboard and it didn't even make it through the first print. It would still light up, but it wouldn't cut anything. So I got a hold of Snapmaker and they sent me this laser. They did send it really quickly and that was nice and all, but this is the upgraded laser, the 1600 milliwatt. And it does enable you to work a lot faster. It's a lot higher powered laser, but that's not what you would have gotten in the version one kit. This is an upgrade part. So I did complete my testing with this laser, but I would have liked to have had a better look at the 200 milliwatt just to see what you were gonna get out of the box. So I continued on with the testing. I started with some cardboard. I had the laser a bit hot. Again, that's the 1600. It came out okay, no issues. Then I moved over to some thin pine. It did fine there. Then I tried some Thundercats. It came out okay. You'll notice these spots right here. That's where the clips are to hold down the media. That is a limiting factor on these. It is again, 150, 150. You'll see that more when we talk about the CNC carving. And then I wanted to try some grayscale. Here's a picture of Hank. It came out just okay, but I wanted to try that again. And on a thicker piece of wood, it actually did come out a lot better. Of course, I dropped it and broke it, but the grayscale on thicker media, it actually gave it a better chance to do its job. So it came out a lot cleaner. I tried some HDPE plastic. It came out really well. It's really nice and clear. And of course, you're not gonna be able to give me a laser etcher without me engraving a Benchy on the back of my cell phone case. So with the laser etching, there really weren't any issues here. The software is pretty straightforward, easy to use. There's not a whole lot of features that you can alter, but it worked out okay. It was kind of a shame that the first unit was faulty. I would have liked to give that 200 milliwatt a little bit better try, but it is what it is and Snapmaker corrected it quickly. Now let's move on to the CNC carving portion. And here's the CNC workstation. You can do relief and vector. This is just text, so I can show you what it's doing. You do get a couple of different bits. The ones in the kit are the red one, the carving V bit, and the flat end mill. It looks like you can also get a ball end mill. So it's a lot like the laser setup. There's a few different settings in here. Not super robust. You can set your speed your plunge speed, how fast it actually cuts down. It's gonna cut pretty slow either way, but it does get the job done. Here's a look at the module and the bits. I mostly use the V-bit. I did try out the flat end mill, but it's not really precise enough to do any of the detail work that I was doing. But the carvings came out pretty good. There's the one I did with the flat end mill. You can see it just cut them out. It kind of rounded them instead of making the letters. Then the rest of these are with the V-bit. Again, I had a Thundercats thing going. And I went a little deeper on that. You can see it actually did a fair job. It preserved the details in the letters pretty well. And here we come back to that 150 by 150 volume. When you have your workpiece and you're trying to do carving or even laser etching, you're going to have to allow space for your material and the clamps that you have to hold it on the bed with. So to get your optimal build size on this model, I suggest you cut out a piece that's the same size and then use four holes to just bolt it down to this plate. That way you just have to deal with the holes after the fact, but you can use almost the whole build volume. The clamps they give you in the kit are these. They're just little metal pieces that you can use the screws to hold your material down to the plate, but that does eat up a lot of room. I wasn't able to do very large carvings. So you might have to get creative here to at least use a little bit more of the build volume. And both in the laser mode and in the CNC mode, you have to set your origin by hand. So basically you either have to use the controls on your computer or on the screen to jog where the center is, set the origin button, and then it will start cutting from there. It doesn't do a home to try to figure out where the origin is gonna be. And with the CNC mode, you have to use a piece of paper to set the cutting height. So they want you to start about 0.2 millimeter above the surface of the material you're using. And with the laser, if you have a taller piece of material, you have to focus that with a piece of paper. 
So you have to jog up and down to try to focus that laser in so it will do its etching correctly. So a lot of manual things, again, that make it pretty hard to use in standalone mode. And I did want to mention one thing that I liked about the Snapmaker. And I don't like to mention packaging very often on these videos, but they did a really nice job. Their box has a handle on it, and it has really nice foam compartments where you can store your modules when you're not using them. They even tried to convey on the outside of the box what you were going to get in this kit. I don't know, I just really like the packaging on this thing. And I want to mention too that you really need to use safety when you're using any type of laser. I wouldn't want to laser cut things inside. I actually did all this out in my shed. And there is no way that you're going to be able to run that CNC feature inside your house. It's just way too noisy and it produces a lot of dust. So be aware of that. And let's talk about noise just a little bit more, even in 3D printing mode. This is just the fan noise. And now we've started printing. And I did take some video of it doing the CNC carving. I don't know how much you can tell from this video how loud it is, but it's definitely something you don't want to run inside the house. I see this as something more for a shop environment of some kind, where you can tether it to a computer, just set it up permanently next to a terminal so you can control it a lot easier, rather than try to run in standalone mode. So there's the original Snapmaker, and I have to admit, I kind of like the way this little machine is built. It's completely modular, so all the X, Y, and Z parts are all the same. They can be interchanged, and I think that's a really cool design idea. And it is technically a three-in-one machine. You can 3D print, laser etch, and CNC carve. But it doesn't particularly excel at any one of those. And that's what I would expect for a machine like this at that price point. Now there are some drawbacks, the first one being the build volume. It is advertised as a 150 cube. But after you get your material clamped down for the CNC carving or the laser etching, that's gonna make that build volume a lot smaller. So definitely consider that. Then there's the firmware and the software. The firmware needs to be updated so you're not so dependent on tethering to a computer. It needs to be easier to use. Not a lot of users are going to want to do that. And there's the slicing. It needs to have a lot more features added so you can get a nicer 3D print. But you can use your own slicer. And then there's the noise. You don't want to be in the same room or building while this thing's operating. It's better suited for a shop so you can use all the features freely and you don't have to worry about it being messy or quiet. Now I do hope that they improved a lot of these things in 2.0 because I had a lot of fun testing this machine and using all the different features. And now they are offering larger build volumes, so that will come in handy for sure. But for this price point, the Snapmaker platform is probably the only thing you're going to get even close that does all three of these things. So if you need a machine like this, definitely take a look at 2.0. That's it for today. I hope you liked this video, and I'll see you very soon on the next one.